Welcome back to Airborne Productions. We've made it quite a long way on making our pipe for the two-stroke, in our case, the Yamaha DG360. We started with design, then we went to building that first piece that comes out of the exhaust port. Then we did the expansion chamber itself with those cones that expand and contract. But next, we need to tame the sound a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I like me a nice loud bike. But we're gonna bring the noise down just a little bit to make it a little more rideable on the street. And to do so, we make a muffler or a silencer as it's commonly called on a two stroke. Let's do it. So the basic idea of a muffler or a silencer is to take all that sound coming from the engine out of the exhaust, push it through a small tube with little holes in it, surround that with a big tube, and then put some packing material in between. That way you capture some of that exhaust sound. For our inner pipe material, we have a piece of one inch tubing, 18 gauge, that we're gonna drill. First, we need to heat up and swage out our inner pipe material, that way it slips over the pre-existing exhaust. Okay, we got this heated and forged out, and this one sanded. Really good fit. Now time to drill some holes in this guy. We got the tubing locked up in the middle. We're gonna start drilling holes. We have a 7 64 spit. Yeah, we're gonna run some holes down here and rotate it and do it again. One pass down, I'm gonna rotate it, try another. Okay, these are done for now. We got our holes all drilled out, just forged out. Good fit, now to finish it up. Now when you make a silencer, you can do it out of any material. You see a lot of them in aluminum nowadays on the outside. I'm going to do mine out of steel and not just any steel. I'm going to use an old can, in this case, a Klotz Nitro can. Now I'm using this Klotz can just to be a little creative and do something different. But you can use anything. I mean, it can be oval tubing, it can be rectangular, hexagonal. I mean, it could even be earth shaped, it doesn't matter. First, we started by emptying out this old Klotz can, getting rid of the top, and getting rid of the bottom. We thoroughly rinsed and filled it with water so that when we do some welding on it, it won't explode. Klotz Nitro is half nitropropane, which is very explosive. After getting rid of the plastic cap, we realized that our ends are a little bit big for the tubing that we're using. Our tubing is one inch, and the end appears to be about an inch and a quarter. So we need to fill in that gap with a ring. Here I'm making these rings out of 20 gauge steel. Super easy. Just cut them close to shape with tin snips, sanding them down a bit on the belt sander, and there it is. A couple tacks later, and it looks like it's in a pretty good spot. I then close the gap by running a bead all the way around this thing. Looks great. Now that our ring is in place, we need to drill a hole in it so that our exhaust can flow out of the end of the can. Remember, I'm using this end of the can for the end of the pipe because it's slightly cone shaped. It looks pretty cool. On the other end, I'll weld that other piece of 20 gauge steel, but I won't do that until the tubing is in place, the can is fully packed, and it's ready to be sealed up. 
Now typically, the end of this can would be removable somehow. Whether it was tabs that were threaded, or the entire thing could be threaded, I don't know. I do not ever plan to repack this thing, so mine will not be removable. Both ends of this will be entirely welded, and that's fine. If you do want to repack your silencer in the future, make sure that somehow it's removable. Or just don't worry about it. It'll be a little louder, but that's cool, right? I was having trouble drilling this hole all the way up to one inch because my bits are pretty dull, but that's okay. I'll ground the rest of this all the way to one inch with the Dremel until I can get my tubing all the way through and then it'll get welded. Okay, that looks nice. We'll be able to pack our fiberglass in this end after we weld this up. So get packed, and then capped and welded. Here we go. Okay, this side's all welded up. Doesn't look great, but it'll do. You can see the core is on the inside. So now we gotta make the cap for this end and get ready to pack this thing. Okay, just finished drilling this hole. I uh, taken a Dremel and cleaning it up. So it fits perfectly on the end of it. Now we're going to pack the silencer with some packing, and then weld this thing on. So I bought some of the FMF packing material. It comes in the sheet. So basically, you would usually put your silencer here and cut to length based on the seams here. But this is pretty short, shorter than the usual FMF cans. So I'm gonna run these three right here. That looks like it should do perfectly as far as the length goes. Then these will wrap around on the inside of the can right there. And just a warning, this packing material can be pretty irritating to your skin. Uh, so I'm wearing gloves. It would be a good idea to have a long sleeve, but I don't have one with me. But that'll be okay. Um, it will get all over your hands. So like I said, wear some gloves. Glasses are another good idea. Um, a respirator is not a horrible idea either. But I won't be playing in this all day. We're just putting it in the pipe and we're done with it after we weld it. Um, but just to let you know, it will irritate you. Alrighty, first try. Uh, this stuff's a little bit too thick to fit into my silencer. So I'm just gonna pull it out of the, the packing that they have, pull, pull it out of the uh, whatever it is that they're encasing it with. And I just take the individual um, fibers and grains and everything, and stuff them in the pipe by hand. It'll work just fine. There's what she looks like all packed up. Uh, I took the individual threads out of that. Like I said, it wasn't working as it was all together. But it worked just fine. Uh, it's very tight. I'll put the cap on it and weld her up. Just like that. I tell you what, this stuff does not want to weld at all. Uh, it's coming along, but it looks pretty bad. Yeah, she's spitting all kinds of stuff. It, it just doesn't want to weld. Well, that was pretty difficult, not gonna lie. Uh, it looks pretty rough, not the best welds. But uh, the material itself is really not good for welding. Um, the end cap's only 40 thousandths and the material itself is thinner. So tricky with the heat control and everything, it's teaching me a lot. All that smoke is the glue that you see from the label, the glue and the paper uh, melting, but that's okay. It actually looks kind of cool, hell yeah. Okay, now the inside of the end cap is welded to that last piece. Much easier to weld this. It's actually weldable steel. Okay, now to figure out exactly where this thing is going. I'm planning on having it probably sit about right there-ish. A little bit of clearance off the shock. Nothing interrupting there. I'll have the tubing made up from here, the end of the expansion chamber, back around to here. So first up, is this group of pie cuts right here. Then this little flared out piece. So I'm gonna chop this down about here or so, and it'll go on the pie cuts there. And back to mock-up, we have uh, the first piece taped on. So there's some pie cuts in here that rotated out. Here's our expanded piece that is detachable. 
Eventually there'll be a spring mounting this. Then this will get welded on here. Out it will come. I need to trim this back about an inch or so. Put some pie cuts on this to rotate it back. And after this goes the can about right here. So we'll get some pie cuts welded on this thing after we trim it, get it welded onto this piece, weld it onto the can and see what she looks like. Okay, that's tacked in place, mostly. I need to tack what's under the blue tape, need to tack the can on. But other than that, that's about what it's gonna look like. It'll do. Alrighty, we have ran out of daylight and this shop light isn't really doing very good. So we're gonna call it quits here, but we have a silencer. So let me show you what it looks like when it's on the bike. Here you have it. Now obviously it isn't going to stay taped. Next time I'm going to take off the tape and finish those tacks and weld them back up. But the silencer itself is finished. Now to test it out. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. In comparison, we have a simple tube. A lot louder. So in the next video we have a whole lot to do. We're going to attach a spring system to fasten this here. Obviously finish up these welds. We're also going to make a rubber mount back here. Uh, this is a decent amount of weight hanging pretty far off of here. I don't think the springs will be enough to hold it steady. So to prevent it from wobbling too much we'll make a mount here. Uh, we will also make a mount for the expansion chamber itself since you can move it. In the next video, we're also going to make a gasket for the front. That way there's no air leaks. And lastly, we will clear coat the entire thing. The reason I want to do that is to preserve this raw metal look. I don't want it just being covered in rust. Same thing with this piece. And I don't want to paint it or anything. I just like this raw welded metal look. So please stick with us. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks, guys.